Kentucky head coach Nick Mingione, student athletes Robert Hogan, James McCoy, as well as Reeves Mingione. Um, questions for the student athletes? Again, please uh, raise your hand and identify yourself in your media outlet before asking. Ethan Grimm's cast coverage. Robert, what was what was working out there for you today? You came in there in tough situation and pitched three shutout innings. Oh, I guess the thing is just throwing strikes. That was the biggest thing, just being able to throw every pitch for a strike. That keeps the hitters off balance. Um, and I have an unbelievable defense behind me. So it's easy to pitch when you have guys like G behind me and James. Like they're, they're getting the balls that not a lot of teams can. So it's a lot easier to pitch like that. Come from? Uh, Daniel Hager, Kentucky Sports Radio. James, you entered the game in a bit of a slump, but you got a home run and a double. What kind of change in your approach today? Uh, I was about three hours down here with Coach Minch, just working on a bunch of fields. I mean, doing a bunch of crazy stuff. And, you know, I just thank him for all, you know, everything he pours into us. And, and Reeves. Reeves was down there with us, too. So, yeah, that, that was really cool. Yeah. John Hill, Robert, 50 pitches today. Just what's kind of your uh, so I'm going to say I'm going to get some rest tonight, uh, do some recovery, um, probably do a light day tomorrow or take it off no throw, and then I'll be ready for Sunday. Yeah. For both of you guys, Michael Epps, Flash 56. Good good one. One. What was it like playing postseason baseball here in this region? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool, you know, seeing all the fans come out and, uh, you know, they kind of rush in the gates there uh, right when they open in BP. Like we were, we were running in from doing our defensive work, but, you know, it's cool just to see the rush into the all the terraces there, and uh, they have our backs whole game. Yeah, I would I would say that it's pretty cool. Um, BBN is pretty awesome. Um, being here is probably the greatest decision I've ever made. Um, you know, I, I couldn't thank Mingione enough, um, and like this place, what it means to me. And so playing postseason baseball here, it means a lot. Uh, John Clay, your leader, following up on that, what, what does that do for you guys? When you've got a crowd like that, as you mentioned, the way they showed up and supporting you, playing at home. What, what does that do for you during a game? Yeah, it just puts the focus like on the front of the jersey, you know, the big blue nation, everyone, you know, they, they come out and support us when weather's raining. I mean, it was Vandy and it was, I was getting there, I was on right getting soaked and, you know, everyone else is still in the outfield with me and they're not running for cover, but, you know, they, they pour, they pour their hearts in us and it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Drummond, uh, Rivals. James, what did you see on the, on the home run <laughs> pitch? And it, it, was, it looked like it was uh, quite a laser shot. Yeah. It didn't get very high off the ground. Yeah, I saw a uh, slider the pitch before, and uh, it was called a ball, and he came back to it. So uh, I felt good swinging at it. And uh, my first hit, I thought it was going to maybe hook a little bit more foul. So I kind of got out of the box, and I was like, oh, that's foul. And then a couple more steps, like, oh, that's, that's fair. So I kind of, you know, it was, it was cool to see it uh, go over. Gabriel, Big Blue Insider. James, you've been with the program for a while. Uh, this is such a great opportunity, obviously, one game at a time, but what kind of pressure, if any, are you guys feeling to take advantage of this? Uh, I don't think there's much pressure. You know, we, we prepare, like, like for these games or if, you know, bigger state stakes. And, uh, you know, we, we just focus on preparing and, you know, preparing the best that we can. So. <laughs> Uh, Paul Novielli, 102.7 the game, Bleed Blue Network. Uh, obviously, the fifth inning, they kind of come storming back, uh, threatening the line, or putting a lot of pressure on you guys. Really, that whole inning, what's the mood in the dugout right after that to make sure that you guys come out and answer, really, and kind of grab <laughs> momentum back and kind of seize control of the game again? I mean, I would say for us, the biggest thing is just staying with us. We don't. We don't like to um, see what they're doing. And I mean, if they score, then like we're going to score right back or we're just going to keep trying to lift each other up. We're not going to try and have any time in the game where we're down. Um, <clears throat> that's our biggest thing is we like in the dugout, we like to be up no matter what the score is. If we're up, if we're down, we're always going to be up in the dugout having fun. Over there. Uh, Michael Preston, NCAA.com. For both of you, how valuable is it with what you guys have to go through on a weekly basis when you're playing in your conference? How valuable is that now when you get into this kind of situation? I mean, I would say it, it definitely is valuable. Um, but <coughs> the team we played today, like you saw, they were resilient. They uh, they came out attacking, and then, I mean, they almost came back, you know. So, but having the experience we do in the SEC, it definitely helps to where we can stop it and we know what, what we are. Um, I mean, it's the best conference in the country. 
I mean, it says it for itself, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, it's week in, week out, as you say. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough schedule no matter who you're playing, really. And um, it's interesting. Coach Mendel always says, you know, those games all count the same. And uh, it just prepares you because week in, week out, it's, you know, tough team and uh, tough lineups every day. So, and then you get, you get to the, um, the game today and, you know, they're a tough lineup too. And they took advantage of our mistakes. And it's just a matter of, you know, we've been through it before. We've been through it for 10 weeks in SEC. So we, uh, we, know, how to, we know how to battle it and come back. Yeah, right Ryan Black with the Louisville Courier Journal. James, in your first dance, you kind of mentioned that being down here with Coach Mench for about three hours, doing <laughs> yeah. a bunch of crazy stuff, is kind of what helped him with that. Can you, without maybe giving away secrets, can you kind of describe what some of crazy stuff and what was it that clicked from that? Uh, I think one of the craziest thing was uh, like, if this is the plate here, we put a T like where Reeves is, and I'm standing there, and he's like, all right, I want you to hit this ball off this T, like at ammo's over here. And it was <laughs> a swing and miss. <laughs> it was like, ooh, that was that looked weird. But then it was like, you know, I feel something, and uh, you know, it's, baseball's all about adjustments and um, just having feel with your swing and you know, figuring out those adjustments and what's working. John Wong, Nolan Media, Robert, can you talk a little bit about Dominic's performance and, and how, what that means to the team? Yeah, so that was awesome. Being able to see him and go out there and absolutely dominate. Um, he's one of those guys that, that we needed that to happen. Um, and having him come out today and do that and give us those innings, it saves arms for this weekend. And so now we have a lot of guys for tomorrow. I mean, um, and it's just something where we can all build off that. We can all build off each other. And we know we trust everyone who, who gets the ball. Any more questions for the student athletes? Yeah, thank you. So one more. This one's uh, for Robert, though. Uh, as a kid, you probably dreamed playing, you know, in the playoffs or, or postseason baseball <laughs> on the mound, trying to get that final out. What was that like today in front of this home crowd? When that, you know, when you can finally tell, hey, we're gonna we're gonna win this thing. We're gonna get out of it, right? What's that going through your mind? And have you was it everything you probably thought of as a kid uh, being on the mound for that final out in a game like that would be? I mean. I guess I can't, it kind of makes me speechless because I didn't really have any thoughts. I was just like, you know, I'm just getting this out, you know, and um, I mean, it's one of those things where playing baseball is hard and it's like every other game. I mean, there was a lot of people and I mean, every weekend we have it and it's not like I thought of it. It's just another weekend. It's another weekend in playing baseball, having fun. Robert. You have played a lot of baseball. <clears throat> you came here, you bet on yourself, you came through the portal, and you played a big role all year. What has it meant to you to be a part of this and to help you lift this program to a place it's never been before? Um, it's a pretty special feeling. I mean, this place is unreal. Um, and like I've said before, I uh, there's no place I'd rather be right now than, than here in Kentucky, playing for this school in the state. Um, the guys too they're my brothers and i i don't know what else to say is it's just just pretty awesome being here and being able to play for the these guys coach minge everyone it's uh it's like nothing i could ever ask for any more for student athletes <laughs> all right guys thank you you're free to go get that thank water. you <laughs> you need another one james Opening statement from Coach that I forgot. Um, when they opened them gates about 90 minutes before just to watch our fans, like, just rush to get to their spots, it was, uh, it was a surreal, surreal feeling. Um, I've been to another place where it's been like that, but we hadn't had that yet. And um, so I first off want to thank our fans for showing up um, in the sun and the heat. They showed up. It was 90 minutes, I believe. It was 90 minutes before the game, and they're waiting to sit there. They waited an hour and a half until the games even started. And then they sat through, um, how long was that game? Somebody help me. Three and a half almost? Three and a half? 
So our fans, they sat there for five hours. Um, so just super thankful uh, to them. I thought Dom gave us a great start. Um, he went four shutout to start and then give them a lot of credit. They started putting balls in play um, with two strikes. They just flicked balls, hit it really, quite frankly, where we weren't. And um, that's a really good team. They're champions for a reason. So, um, but I thought Don, he got us a lot of big outs. I thought Cam O'Brien, the job that he did to come in in the fifth was uh, crucial, um, where we were able to minimize. I thought Evan Byer just got us two outs, then obviously Hogan was fantastic, got us 10 outs. And they had their chances, give them a lot of credit. They put a lot of pressure on us, but I give our guys credit. Um, we bent, but we didn't break. So um, they did score in two innings, but they didn't score in the other seven. And I thought that was the difference in the game. Nick, uh, Michael, I have five, six, six. Was there a little nail bite in there? I mean, it was close there. It was tight. And does that kind of give a wake up call to the guys? Like, at this point, every single team is going to be good. Um, you know, we've been, you guys have watched us play. How many times have we been in that same game? I just feel like we've been there so many times. Um, I don't buy my nails. My wife's proud. Um, Reeves, do you still buy yours or are you good? No. All right, Reeves stopped biting. So no one, I know Kristen doesn't bite her nails. So no one in our family buys her nails. But was it. Man, intense and every play and every inch matter, absolutely. But to our point the other day, we've been in those games um, for 15 weeks. So this is the 16th week of it. So I, I thought our guys absolutely responded. You know, I thought a big um, moment in the game was in the fifth. They score five, and then we immediately score two, and I thought that was the difference in the game. They immediately score five, and we answer back with two. I thought that was big. Right there. Ethan Grant, Scott Stubridge. So Devin Burks. He's had his ups and downs all year, but just le leave it off right where he left off last year in the regional. Can you just talk about how he played today? The guy is just clutch. He had four key blocks, kept the game in front the entire time. And every one of those blocks saved us a base, which ultimately saved us a run. So I thought his leadership was fantastic. Um, um, his verbal and nonverbal behind the plate is absolutely crucial. And there's a reason why we bat him in a three hole. You know, I think you can look at stats and other things, but that guy is as tough and he's as clutch as anybody in our program. So um, he was five for five today, quality at bats. Um, it was five for five. Every at bat, he did something positive for Kentucky. So um, I thought that was good. And then, um, you know, I thought the production up and down our lineup was crucial. I talked about our pitching, I mentioned some of our defense, but um, we had seven different guys that had an RBI. Seven. And if you look at what our seven, eight, and nine guys did, they scored five of our 10 runs between those guys. So I think any time you have that kind of production up and down the lineup, um, it obviously makes us hard to beat. And uh, we were able to do it all. We had bunts, bombs, ran the bases, stolen bases, got thrown out a couple of times being aggressive, but we were on the full on attack. Uh, we drew walks, we got hit by pitches, and uh, we hit on a lot of, a lot of cylinders um, offensively. Yeah, far left. Michael Preston, NCAA.com. Today starts a journey for a lot of teams who are hoping it goes for two or three weeks and ends up in the mall. When you had a program that's had a lot of success but it's never been there, can you talk about the hunger of the people who were coming in those stands 90 minutes before, your hunger, your players' hunger, to get to a place, this place is never been? Yeah. Um, been a lot of work, a lot of ups and downs. I've learned a lot as a coach. I haven't been perfect, um, but the one thing I will say is that as our program has continued to try to climb and make adjustments and get better, our fans have done the same thing. And you can just see year after year, you can just see it building from the end of 22 to last year to this year. And I want to compliment this team, and you guys have heard me say this a lot. They are so good at moving on to the next thing. Like, we talk all the time. You've heard us say about this win will expire at midnight, and it will. They will move, they move on immediately. And that's how, you know, la this year we look up, and at one point we're 15-1 and one in the league. It's like, it's incredible. How are you able to do that? And if I told our team, hey, we better go 15-1 and one at the beginning of the year, they'd be like, coach, you're crazy. But they have literally, literally have taken each game, and they move on, and they say next, and it's a new day. Win or lose, next, 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 next. And ultimately, it's a lot like building a house. You really have to do it a brick house. You do have to do it one brick at a time. And you got to keep laying them. And when one gets off, you got to reset it and uh, get it going. And you just keep going. And then by the time you look up and you do that enough times for a long enough period of time, 
after a while you look up and you're like wow look at this we've, we've built a mansion but you can only do it one brick at a time and that's what we've attempted to do Burt Granger, D1 Baseball. Uh, Coach, you talked about the fifth inning. And I think going into that inning, Dom had only given up one hit. And I think we all agree he pitched better than the stat line. They had three three info base hits and a loop that inning. Scored five runs. How do you keep the guys from getting frustrated or yourself from getting frustrated when teams are doing those frustrating things to you that you've been doing to them all season long? Yeah, um, that's where it's our ability to move on. I thought it helped. You know, because I, I did not think Dom got frustrated. I thought he just kept making his pitch, and it was like, boom, they put the ball in play, give him credit, boom, they put it in play. But I thought he held, I thought he held true to who he was. He didn't get frustrated. And um, you're right, that's us at our best, where we're putting balls in play and creating pressure and, and making plays. Um, so I thought he did that, and I thought Cam, he settled that game too. Cam O'Brien, he did what he's done all year. He's been our fireman every time it gets to a spot where we need to bring in a fireman, boom, and it gets hairy, he's right there. And um, um, I thought they held it together. And I, I, I also, again, like how we responded right after. You know, to score two immediately, I thought that was crucial. Yeah. Yeah, John, Hale. Nick, obviously when you're up 8-0, eight, eight it looks like maybe you're going to be able to make it out there without using any of your top relievers. You have to do what you have to do to win the game. Yes. But how do you feel about the pitching situation? Yeah, you know, if um, you, you asked me before the game, how was it going to go? It was going to go Dom to Hogan. And we used Kim in between there, and uh, we used Evan, who got us, obviously, two outs. And you could see Hogan was starting to run on fumes there at the end. So I even think those two outs by Evan Byers was big, you know. So, But that was the plan, to go right to Dom, right to Hogan. So um, would it have been nice, up eight nothing, to try to put the game away? Yes, but that's a good team. That's a good team, and it was going to be hard to put them away. And if you look at that team, how many times they scored eight or more runs in their last 15 games, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So I knew deep down that they were going to make their run and their push, um, and uh, it, it played out the way we wanted with Hogan. Nick, kind of follow up on Mike's question. Actually, as a number two overall seed, you're very capable of getting where you want to go. But how do you keep the guys loose? And concentrate on the on the goal, but also have fun and play loose. Yeah, um, they've actually done that all year. And there's a couple times where I got to be honest, John. Like I'm I'm looking down and I'm like, do I want to look down and see what they're doing? I'm like, they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, I really don't have to really coach that as much with this group because uh, they're keeping it loose. Today I saw the cap stack. I don't know if you saw that. This was new, but they mixed in camo. Did you guys catch that? It was like regular cap, then a camel cap, then a regular cap, then a camel. And like they brought the camel. I saw them sitting on the bench. I'm like, I, early in the game, I'm like, I bet that's for the cap stack. Whenever we do that. Like, so they're thinking ahead. I saw Jackson Novi today. John, I really look, I'm walking down the dugout, I'm getting ready to coach, and I was like, Jackson Novi had full catcher's gear on. <laughs> Left handed pitcher. I'm like, all right, they're loose. <laughs> like, they're loose. Um, so. We need them to keep playing that way, but it all starts. They can only be loose if they compete first, and they know that. It starts. That is the building block of anything we do. You have to compete at the highest level. Yeah. Coach, expanding on Dom, what kind of went in that decision for him to start today? Um, well, our starters, you guys know this. Those that have followed our program closely, you've been there, I think, about every game. Um, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of our starters. They have thrown a bulk of innings. And when we're at our best, they take us deep into the game. Well, they've done that. So therefore, they've thrown a good bit. And um, so we chose to not throw Dom as much in the SEC tournament. If you remember, we threw him for maybe an inning to get out of there. And he was kind of not beat up, but he's just there's some things that are going on. So we really gave him some good rest. And I give Coach Roselle credit. Him and Don work, uh, worked this, this past week and actually moved Don on the rubber some. And I thought that adjustment really helped, you know. And that's the thing. I just compliment our guys, James. We tried, like, honestly, 30 different things with him. 
30 different things to get him these different feels. And you would put a ball over here, and you got to hit the ball over there. Then I would put a ball on the tee over here and said, okay, try your hands right here. Okay, put your elbows together. Spread your feet out. Spread out. Get your hip in there a little more. Try that. And it's like back and forth, and it's like, all right, do circles. Okay, angle your bat this way, James. Try that. No, nope, that didn't work. Okay, grab this stick right here, this big PVC pipe. Swing that thing. Okay, you hear the swoosh? Okay, try that. No, nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'm going to hold your hip right here, and like you're going to swing. And it was like, it was a marathon. But to his credit, he just wanted to be coached and he wanted to figure it out. And same thing with Dom. I give him a lot of credit. He made an adjustment on the rubber and it paid big dividends. Um, so I appreciate it about our team. They're always trying to get better, all of them. Even the guys on the bench are finding ways to get in there. And um, we have good players that didn't get a chance to get in, but um, they'll be ready when their time's called. But they work. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, what, what's the difference in mentality, if, if any, from the position you were in last season and had to fight out of? And and taking care of the first game this season. Game two has been our uh, deal. As you In 17, we won the first game, lost the second one. In 23, won the first one, lose the second one. So um, we've got to be able to weigh, you know, to win a regional, you know this, you can win it in three games or you got to do it in five. So um, we haven't done, in those two years, we have not won the second game. That has been our biggest challenge. So um, now we have Poos and Memo both available, rested on good rest, to win this, try to win the second game against a really good team. Um, so, um, guys, this has been a, a really cool uh, five days. Really cool five days. Um, we had our selection show with our number two national seed. Uh, we get done, and uh, this little dude right here stands up in front of our team and says he was going to get baptized on Thursday. Invited our team, and yesterday at my house. Uh, it was optional. We had the whole team there, and uh, Reeves got baptized. And then uh, we came out today, and we win. It's like phew, pretty good five days. Number two national seed, your son gets baptized, and you win game one. It's like, whew, pr praise the Lord. Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Staying on the same track with that, can you just talk about how cool it's been to experience, experience this with your son all year, him being in the dugout, being next to you the whole time? Yeah. Uh, we're a family. And uh, those of you that followed us, um, when Kristen and I uh, took the job here, you know, Kristen is as bright as person as I've ever met. Um, she has two degrees. Um, and she just basically, we decided that this was going to be our team and we're going to do this together. So we really do have a family. Um, and Kristen and Reeves, they're there all the time. Um, Kristen pours our heart and soul into this. Um, our fans, all the families, Reeves does the same thing. Um, it's not hard to be a coach's uh, wife, and it's not hard to be a coach's son, but we do it the best way we know how. And uh, the only way I know to do it is to do it together as a family. And uh, you really, our team is the same exact way. They're just a group of guys that love each other. They want to do everything they can to help Kentucky win. And uh, it's been a great group. And um, our fans have noticed that. Our fans have noticed their unselfishness and um, their the way they root and pull for each other. It's been fun. But... Uh, yeah, I, I can't do what I do without my wife and my son because uh, they are the most important thing in my life. And uh, But they're in it with us. And my wife's competitive, and so is Reeves now. He'll tell me, Dad, what happened to this? <laughs> He'll keep me straight. They'll keep me straight. Reeves, what advice would you give for your dad? <laughs> I don't really know. How do you want us to practice? Uh everything that you've been doing the last few years. Yep, keep doing Last it. year, 17, just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And if, there, if that doesn't go right with some guys, work with them and make it better. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coach, I've got a question for you. You start out first inning, you guys are stealing bases, you know, you're up a bunch of runs, you're stealing bases. I think I know the answer to this, but does that aggressiveness, is that ever gonna, be pulled back a little bit? Are there situations where you, you wouldn't do that? Um, we're at our best when we attack and uh, we force people to uh, make plays and make mistakes. And, you know, there's times where we made two outs on the bases today, but we also forced them to make three errors, right? Even in the first inning, think about this. We scored a run in the first inning without a hit, without a hit. How do we do it? We did it with a walk, a stolen base. They try to pick, made an error. Boom, there's your run. We never got a hit. The ball never left the infield, right? I mean, 
to get to third base like we didn't do it so um that's us at our best and we just feel like if you do that to 18 to 24 year olds over time they're going to make mistakes and um you know even i thought grant did a great job he got thrown out third it was one out that's the time to do it there are 12 ways you can score from third base that you can't from second and especially with one out that's the time to do it the guy made a perfect throw tip your cap just a little, little bit past the back so what next play move on but that's us at our best when we force our opponent so um, is there a time where we'll back off? I don't know. I don't know. I just love when we play that way, and I think it totally affects our opponents. Joe from Brandon, Kentucky Colonel. Um, can you talk about what Hogan has meant? He mentioned the family aspect of the team. Can you talk about what he's meant to the team, both the player and the pitcher, all season long? Yeah, I told him this. Um, we do something that I um, – Ty Crittenberger is one of our seniors, and um, he is uh, as good as leader as we have. And he hasn't played much. He's waiting for his opportunities. And when he does, he'll take advantage of it, and he'll do great. Um, but we did a deal um, not too long ago where we talked about like, what makes our team great. Like, what is it? And Ty Crittenberger stands in the back right-hand corner, and um, actually where Shelby Jean's sitting. And... Um, he said, he raised his hand, he says, what we value makes us different. And what we value on the pitching and defense side is quality pitches, okay? Um, and every after every game, our standard is to have 80% quality pitches. So the following day, Coach Rosell, he's totaling up his chart right now. I know exactly what he was doing. Um, he's gonna send me a text and we'll see where we were at with our quality pitches. And before the, um, game tomorrow we'll talk about the quality pitches and whenever hoagie meets that standard and most of the time he does okay and i say all right robert hogan 84 percent the team goes crazy for the guy they love him and i mentioned that to him even might have been yesterday at practice i said i love the way the team loves you hoagie and we did another exercise where I said, um, it was actually after one of our chapels, they were talking about serving and how people are at their best when they serve. And I said, hey, who, who serves you guys? Like who is one of those guys that you could ask, hey, this guy will do anything for me, okay? It was a story about the people sitting, holding the, um, their friend and putting them down through the roof, okay? To go see Jesus or whatever, because there was just people everywhere. And it's like, hey, who would, who would do anything for you? And the team, immediately, Hoagie, he'll do anything for me. He's like one of those guys that they just, he will serve them. He'll do anything for them. And it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So they, they love him. They love each other. But boy, do they love that guy. They love that guy. A couple more. Uh, coach, um, you know, how, how good is it for you as a coach to see, you know, as a team, you guys have, you know, it seems like ups and downs, comebacks get big leads, everything. It's been all over the place this year, right? Yes. It's exciting to watch. But, you know, coming in now as a favorite, as a top seed, and seeing your team kind of take a hit and, and respond and not kind of feel the pressure, from, from a coach's perspective, how much was that like, all right, we're, we're in a really good mental place here. It's not just, you know, loose and, and kind of normal, but, you know, they're focused and we can kind of take the pressure. Yeah, it makes you proud as a coach. And I, I think... You guys know this. We talk about all this all the time, but um, when your team can have experiences, they can draw from those experiences, right? Like we talk about um, this. You've maybe heard me say this all the time. As parents, Kristen and I do not want to give Reeves things. We want to give him experiences because that's what shapes and impacts them, right? That's why that Friday um, against uh, Vanderbilt when we won the SEC, that was an experience they will never forget. And every time our team has been in those games and they've had those experiences, right? I feel like we've played this game, I don't know how many times, right? So over time, you just get used to having to make a pitch. You get used to um, having to make a play, having to make, have, having a bat. All those things matter. So every time you have that experience, um, it helps you. And, you know, it's much like... Um, uh, when you get cut and you get a scab, right? And then it's like your skin gets scarred and then you get tougher and your skin gets tougher and tougher and you just keep getting cut and your skin is just like, after a while, it's just like, just so hard to just penetrate it. It's like you are scarred up, like, man. And our team has been through a lot. They've been through a lot. And I feel like we've played that game right there. I don't know how many times. 
um, whether it's a 4-2 game or it's a 10-8 game. We've played it, and the guys have experienced that. So um, I'll be pretty upset if they hit the panic button, right? Like, then I don't, I don't think they did. I think they just kept going along and just kept playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, make the pitch, make the pitch, play the game, play the game, and um, worked out good. One last one. Anybody? Thank you all for being here. Yes, thank you. Go Cats. Matt.